Ali Yen, please, the floor is yours now. Okay, great. Th thank you very much. Th thank you for putting together this uh, fantastic uh, program. I have uh, learned a lot over the last uh, few days. Uh, this paper is co-authored with Itai Goldstein and Yang uh, from Indiana. Uh, in this paper, the basic motivation is we try to uh, endogenize the information environment uh, of a firm and to think about so about the firms can learn what kind of information and the traders learn what kind of information and how they interact with each other. Uh, so th this is the big question we try to ask and uh, now let me give you some broad motivation uh, in, that can link our study to the finance audience and, and the economics. So the, the broad motivation is about the connection between market efficiency and the real efficiency. And the market efficiency is a very central concept in, in finance and this basically says how much information the price uh, in the financial market can aggregate. And so I was trained in econ department and actually when I learned this concept, I was kind of part of the why we should care about this kind of market efficiency concept. So because econ people only care about the welfare and the market efficiency seemed kind of irrelevant. And then the, the, all the literature tried to connect the market efficiency to uh, welfare. And the one um, reason, one channel, the so-called feedback effect, which is said that market efficiency is a proxy for real efficiency. And this channel, the, the connection can, can arise when you have a learning channel. So some people, uh, some real decision makers like uh, firms or, um, or uh, government or any kind of uh, people who can affect the cash flows of the firm can learn some information from the market if the market acts the information. So this can provide some indulgence signal uh, that can guide the real investment decisions. Uh, so this kind of the idea of the feedback effect, and uh, this idea is uh, actually the very old, and uh, you can, uh, this idea can go back to Hayek or even earlier, so in the, in the AER paper, so that, that's initially just a thought experiment, try to uh, kind of connect this um, market equilibrium to some real efficiency concept. So that, but that recently there are some empirical papers uh, try to show evidence uh, for this feedback effect uh, uh, phenomenon or channel. So then I, I, uh, there, there are kind of two uh, kind of groups of study or two generations of empirical study. Uh, so the, the first generation uh, basically run some cross-sectional regressions and see whether kind of price informativeness of some firm can give you some prediction on, on investment. And this kind of um, regressions, of course, suffer some so-called indoctrinated problem. And later on, some uh, recent studies, uh, they try to identify some settings. In those settings, you can sort of think about some exotic shock to some information environment, and they try to show the causal relation from price informativeness to real investment. So there's some, basically, so this picture, this, uh, this slide is trying to show you there's some empirical evidence suggesting this is really happening in reality, not just a thought experiment. And uh, I also have a recent empirical paper with uh, Etai and the two other uh, co-authors. So what, what we do is try to provide a direct evidence about this uh, feedback effect. So what we do, we, we just do a survey. We, we ask the CEOs in China, it's about uh, 4,000 4, CEOs in China, and we ask them whether they learn information from a financial market, and whether they use the information from, from a financial market, and if they, use, they learn information, what, what kind of information they want to learn, so why they use this information, whether they want to use this information to do real investment. So the, the, the result is kind of very surprising. So we, because of China, people typically thought it's a kind of noisy driven market. Actually more than 84% of them, so the CEOs say, okay, they, they indeed learn information from a market. And when they learn information from a market, they, more, more than 75% of them say they learn this information to guide real investment. So there's kind of some direct evidence for this feedback channel to indeed CEOs or companies learn information from the market and they use this information to guide the real investment decisions. Well, this kind of some background to, to, to show this, that there's some connection between real efficiency and the market efficiency and the people indeed learn information from financial market. And also intuitively, you can imagine, so when the, the information uh, of the market and the information of the firm kind of orthogonal or uncorrelated, 
this feedback effect will be strong because that, that means the information provided by the market is mostly useful for the firm to learn. Uh, but uh, this is just an intuitive argument and what we want to do in this paper to say, okay, what if the information is endogenous? What if the firm can have some kind of uh, capacity to learn information and the market also have some capacity to learn information? So whether the indulgent information environment arising from an equilibrium will favor a feedback effect, will make feedback effect work. So th this kind of question we want to ask. Uh, we try to indulge that information environment and to, 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 to think about it. Uh, so whether this indulgent information outcome will make, will kind of make a feedback effect also work. So this, and we, we, we find that a lot of intu interesting or counterintuitive uh, interaction uh, between the, the learning uh, of the firm and the learning of uh, the market. The, the, the firm's incentive to learn information is kind of intuitive. The firm always want to produce information that's kind of different from the market because that's will benefit their learning and uh, that's the intuitive. But the market is kind of more subtle. So the market might sometimes want to produce information that's similar to the firm. Sometimes they want to produce information that's orthogonal from the firm's information. It depends on the NPV or the profitability of the growth opportunities. So th this is kind of subtle and not always like the, 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 the market want to learn similar or learn different. It depends on some conditions. The, 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 the profitability. So this is kind of the, the, the fundamental interaction between firm learning and the investor learning. And then from based on this interaction, we study some implications. So we, in this talk, I'm going to focus on the first one given the time constraint, but there are also other uh, uh, applications. The first one, we try to think about the, uh, so the, the connection between the market efficiency and the real efficiency that motivates our study in the first place. So we, we found that actually there's some efficient inefficiency. This is like a tongue twister. So that the market can sometimes is inefficient, but it turns out in equilibrium that, 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 that's efficient. That's, that's good for the, for the uh, for the real economy. So that, that's kind of the contribution of the finding of what we, we found. Now let me move on to the model. The model has uh, three dates. Uh, so data zero, data one, and data two. Uh, data, data zero firm and the traders will learn. This is the information stage. Data one, they will trade and uh, the market will aggregate the information and the firms will make an investment and the data two people will consume. So the focus will be on data zero and data one. So this is more passive, this period. So that also only one firm. The firm is controlled by a risk neutral manager. So the manager will try to maximize the, the, the firm value. And then also a continuum of risk neutral traders. Those, those guys, they will treat the, the stock uh, the, of the firm to maximize the trading profits. They also learn information uh, to guide their trading decisions. And both the stock price and the firm value will be endogenous. That's the so-called feedback effect. So the, the, the price will provide the information to cash flow and uh, the cash flow will be endogenous. At the same time, the price will be determined uh, according to people's trading behavior and their forecast about the future cash flow. That is the interaction from the price to the, to, the, to the value and also from the value to the price. That's the, called the fi fi fixed feedback effect. That's a fixed point of problem. Uh, so so the, now let's move on to the investment. So the, the, the firm, it, the value of the firm is, is determined by the investment. So that the investment opportunity, this investment opportunity is, guided, is determined by two dimensions, two sources of uncertainty. One is M, another one is F. So the M and the F refer to uh, some information that uh, the firm has um, information, a relative advantage in acquiring information, or the market has some relative advantage in acquiring information. So you can, broadly speaking, you can interpret this to uh, either some cost information versus the revenue information, or you can link it to the previous um, talks like a cash flow information versus discount information or hard information, soft information. So it so, so just have two uh, dimensions. So we, we need these two dimensions so that we can talk about which dimension uh, the firm uh, or the market will focus on. Uh, this, um, so we, we are agnostic about the interpretation of these two dimensions, but the, the, the key feature uh, differentiating uh, them uh, is the relative advantage. So some, so firm have some relative advantage in acquiring some information, some dimension, and the market has some relative advantage in acquiring different dimension. So this M and F really refers to their relative uh, advantage. 
uh, to, uh, the, the probability is um, uh, ex ante this two dimension kind of uh, uh, symmetric. So they can take a high value or, or, or low value with equal probability. And we make two assumptions on this uh, uh, cash flows uh, that the, the realize the value of these uh, two random variables. One is the high value is larger than the low value, and one is the positive, one is the negative. So this just to try to make the learning intuitive. Otherwise, so, so the, 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 the you always have a positive NPV or negative NPV, there's no rule for learning. And two, we assume X anti the NPV is a negative. So, so that the, the, the firm will only, uh, uh, so the firm will never invest if the, the firm realizes that the bank shock is, uh, is low. Uh, so this is for tractability reasons. So th this is about the investment. And now it's about the firm's problem. The firm is making two decisions on two days respectively. Uh, first of all, on data one, the firm is going to make investment decisions. But what the firm does is the following. The firm look at, look at the price, which is the endogenous, and also have two signals. The firm will acquire two signals and then determine whether the firm wants to invest or not. So the, the key is the investment decision. Either zero or one, one means investment, zero means no, not investment. And then go back to data zero, and the firm will make an invest, uh, information acquisition decision. The, the firm can acquire two signals, SM and SF. So these two signals, so one of them will reveal one dimension with some probability. For, for example, SM will reveal the truth of M dimension with the probability omega M, and they will reveal nothing with the, probability, the remaining probability. Uh, so similarly for this F signal, and there's also some learning capacity. The learning capacity is, uh, is given by the, the linear constraint. Basically, this uh, uh, delta omega m plus uh, omega f is smaller than some capacity. So this delta will capture the relative advantage. It's greater than one. So this relative advantage idea is similar to the concept of relative advantage in international trade. So this, uh, the, the, in this case, the firm has a relative advantage in producing F information because the relative cost for F information is one, but the relative cost for M information is delta. That delta is larger than one. So th this is kind of the idea. So for the, for the financial market, this basically is a compatible Kyle model. So the informed traders, they will assign the order flow Y and they will kind of uh, have a limited position. So if they have strong information, they will buy. They have negative information, weak information, they will sell. There's also noise trading. The noise trading is given by this uniform distribution. And the total order flow is the, inform the, the orders from rational traders and the noise traders. There's also market makers, it's kind of like a Kyle model. Uh, 1985 to see the average order flow and try to make a forecast about uh, the fundamental value that will determine the price. So the price, basically information, uh, the information from trader will you know, come from their order flow and through the forecast or market maker, they will go to the information of price. This will provide information for a firm to make a re their real investment decisions. Now let's look at each trader's problem. The trader also has two decisions to make. The first decision is a, is a trading decision on data one. The firm will also acquire two signals on data zero. It's the signal is very, very similar to the signal the, in, the, in terms of the format to the information acquired by the firm. And then try to mm, mm, buy or sell one unit to maximize the, uh, the trading profit. So this is uh, why is the order flow. And on data zero, the firm will also acquire signals uh, the signal is very similar, as I said. Uh, so it also reveal truth with some probability Q and uh, reveal nothing with the, the remaining probability. Again, there's some capacity. The capacity is also given by a linear uh, constraint. Here, the delta, again, is the relative advantage. And you can see that the, 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 the trader will have a relative advantage in acquire M dimension because the cost per unit of information is one. The cost of per unit of information about the F is equal to delta. The data is larger than one, so the, the, uh, the, the trader has a relative advantage in acquiring uh, M dimension. So M means the market, F means the firm. So th this kind of the, uh, the model, if you think about this relative advantage, it's very, very similar to international uh, trade. Uh, if, you, if you plot their kind of uh, uh, capacity and uh, this linear cost function, they give you some picture looks like this, it's kind of very similar to uh, that the recording uh, relative advantage uh, argument. The slope will give you the relative advantage. So this is the model. Now let me move on to the equilibrium and then talk about the implications. The equilibrium we focus is on um, uh, the, the following. It's kind of um, uh, 
uh, asymmetric equilibrium. So uh, the concept we are going to use is so-called perfect Bayesian equilibrium for, for traders, we consider the following. So we assume a fraction kappa, this, spe this specialized in M information. So they, they only acquire information about the M using their all capacity so that they will see um, uh, each of them will see M information perfectly with the probability of one. Uh, and the remaining one minus chi uh, will specialize in F information. But because their the, the, uh, 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 capacity, uh, relative advantage is given by this, uh, uh, this uh, delta thing, this QM plus delta Q, uh, uh, F is smaller than one. And so if you get rid of this M information, the information they can see about F is one over delta. So this, this is treated, treated basically with in equilibrium, we divided them endogenously into two groups. One group perfectly informed about the M information, another group kind of partially informed about the F information, but no information about M. So this kind of endogenously will arise the two groups. The, of course, in equilibrium, they have to be indifferent be ex ante, but it, this is uh, the equilibrium we want to focus. And the, the, firm, the firm instead, the firm we can acquire both information with the probability omega f or omega m. So the in equilibrium, the firm can see signal uh, f with some probability, also see some signal with uh, about m with some probability. So the firm can see these two signals simultaneously with some probability. So the kind of uh, this, this is the asymmetric uh, idea. So the, the, the firm can sometimes see both signals, but the trader, so you can, they don't divide into two groups. One group can only see one signal in dollars. So the, the, this is the equilibrium we are going to focus. And they will try to indolenize this, uh, this, uh, this uh, chi and this uh, omega uh, f. These are the two uh, key parameters we try to indolenize, the two key variables. So the, also start the interaction between them. So this is the best response functions. Uh, so the result depends on very much the profitability. So this is the definition. In, this is the profitability. This exotic parameter intuitively, you can just think about this kappa as some profitability. When this kappa is, is large, the profitability is, is, is high. With kappa is small, the profitability is very, very small. Uh, so the, between, the number between zero and, and one. And in these three panels, we plot the, the, the reaction functions, the best response functions of the trader to firm information and the firm to trader information. And we try to see that the, the interaction will determine the equilibrium information acquisition. And there are two regimes. So let, let's focus on the, the first two. The, 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 this one is the same, number three is very similar. We just focus on the first two. The first two, uh, the, the left one is a case in which the profitability is relatively small. This one is the profitability, profitability uh, NPV is relatively large. And this, um, you know, in both panels, this blue guy is the best response of the firm, inform, the firm to the trader information. So, and both of them in these two panels, both of them upper the sloping, meaning, so when the traders or the market produce more information about M, which, is, in which they have a relative advantage that the market, the firm will produce more information about F. So the, 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 the firm always want to produce different information from the market. So when the market produces more information about the M, the firm also want, always want to produce more information about the F. So this is always increasing. But this, is, this, uh, this dark guy, the, the, the black, uh, black guys, they, this, the, the, the behavior is different, either down with the sloping or up with the sloping. After the sloping, uh, in this case, meaning when the NPV relatively high, the trader always want to produce different information from uh, the firm. But when NPV is relatively low, the trader will always want to produce the same information at the, the, the firm. So they will behave differently uh, depending on the NPV. So that, that's kind of the key interaction. So we have two types or two regimes of equilibrium. In one regime, the firm uh, want uh, the, the trader want to produce the similar information at the, 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 the firm. In another regime, in this regime, when the NPV is high, the, the, the trader want to produce different information from the firm. So and the, that will determine the equilibrium. That in one equilibrium, which is here, another equilibrium will be here. So now let me talk about the, inter, the, in, the intuition of why this is the case. So for the firm, the intuition is kind of uh, straightforward. Because the firm always want to learn information from the market, if the market already reveals some information, 
the firm don't want to waste the uh, capacity on that. The firm want to produce different information so that the firm can learn more information from its own private information. So that, that's relatively straightforward. But for the market, it's different. The market, the, the market intuition is the, the following. Level. The market has a trade-off. The market either learn information about the M or learn information about the F. So the, the trade-off, if you learn information about the M, it's relatively cheaper for the market because the market has a relative advantage in acquiring M information. So the cost per unit is relatively cheaper. So that, that's the good sign for learning information about the M. But it, the, the, that also good, good, good side for learning information about the F because the, in, in, in aggregate, in market, the, 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 the price will reveal more information about the M, less information about the F because of the, all of the traders have a relative advantage about the M. So probably they tend to produce more information about the M. As a result, the, all the flows will reveal information about the M. So that can give disadvantage for traders who try to learn information about the M because the price will reveal their information advantage. They cannot make profit. So the, the, the kind of, this is the trade-off. The, the, the kind of the partial equilibrium uh, cost, uh, perspective, the trader always want to learn information which is cheaper. But if you think about the general equilibrium, the price also reveal information. So maybe the traders want to learn different information, a different uh, dimension of information. So th th that's kind of the trade-off. And then it turns out the, the which one will dominant depends on the NPV of the project. So uh, the NPV of the project, the, this is the, which is the kappa. Now let's think about the, the why this is the case. Now, su now suppose when the NPV is uh, relatively low, when the NPV is relatively low, no ex ante, the firm will not make an investment. So we will not make an investment, even if the firm can see that it's a signal is, is, is H, the firm still need another signal to convey the idea, okay? The, to, to say, okay, that this other signal is strong so that the firm will, uh, so that the firm will make an investment. In this case, the, the traders might want to learn information about the F because the ex ante, the, there's no cash flow sensitivity, there's no investment. Now, if the trader, the market learn information about the F, that will make the investment more sensitive to that information, so making the information more useful. So the trader can learn information about the F. So, so that, that's the, uh, the case in which you have a, a low NPV. But uh, suppose you have a high NPV, you have high NPV, now the firm already, if you don't, the firm does not learn another dimension of information, the firm already, it's more likely to make investment. The investment is already very sensitive, the, the cash flow already very sensitive to information. But if now the trader learn different information that can make the, uh, the, the, the reveal that can be negative in QA, the firm might give up the investment. So that will reduce the advantage of our trading. So the, in this case, the kind of depends on so whether additional learning of the, the, the firm. The, the here, to basically, you can see that uh, if you do comparative advantage, you have two uh, different types of, of, of uh, uh, different patterns. And uh, also for the market efficiency versus real efficiency, and uh, we, we can see when the NPV is relatively high, I try to highlight this result, the NPV is high, uh, so for, for this case, for the, for the Mm, for, for this uh, red one, if you change this delta parameter, the market efficiency will, along this line, the market efficiency will increase, but the real efficiency will, will decrease. They are misaligned, but actually in this case, this is the good case because they produce a different dimensions of information. Um, I didn't realize the time is so limited. Uh, okay, so this is what, what we try to do. The, to, to summarize, we try to provide the, a model to indulge that information of a firm and the information of the, the trader and there's a kind of interesting interaction between these two, uh, two types and we also find some implications for the connection between market efficiency and the real efficiency. And I very much look forward to peers' discussion. Yeah, great. Thank you very much, Lian. Uh, so now we, uh, um, we have the discussion for the paper. Uh, the, the discussion is Pierre Jinghong Liang from uh, Carnegie Mellon University. Mm -hmm. Please, Jing Hong, the floor is yours, and you have 15 minutes for your discussion. Okay, great. So thanks, Lou, for the introduction, and thanks the organizers for inviting me uh, to this conference. Uh, my primary field is actually in accounting. Uh, I, I see there's uh, a few of us here, 
and like them, I got to enjoy these interesting sessions in the last few days. I do hope you consider us uh, good neighbors um, and we at least share the common interest in information. And I'd also appreciate the opportunity to share my thoughts about this paper. And it's always good to read papers by Itai, Yan, and, and Lian. I'd always learn a lot from them. So I thought uh, this is a, a rather complex paper and I tried to unpack this. So in the rest of my discussion, I want to share three uh, reflections that I have after reading the paper. Um, first, I want to show you a basic framework which helped me to organize my thoughts about market feedback work. Um, next, I want to share how share with you how I think about the paper in the context of this framework. And then I'm going to offer some suggestions on how the paper and maybe future work can go from here. And I'll end with some takeaways. So here's the, a framework for thinking about market feedback. I'm going to show you a diagram, and this diagram sketches a framework that has helped me to organize the economic forces that I see here. At the center of this framework is the dual of a firm, uh, a market, a stock market, or a decision maker, or the firm, as distinct objects. Um, and in this framework, a decision maker or the firm will make a real decision, and that will generate some future um, payoff, something like cash flows. And the market will work its magic to generate a stock price, um, which uh, reflects the future payoffs, such as cash flows. And the magic in price reflects the fundamental property of efficiently aggregating information from a diverse sort of, uh, sources, uh, like anonymous traders, um, as shown in seminal work by Grossman, Stiglitz, and Kyle. Um, and now the next big insight in this framework is that price also affects cash flow because it conveys information to the real decision maker. And this decision maker would make a decision that would change the cash flow that the price is reflecting. In the last few decades, this feedback work um, has been one of the most active applied theory work. Um, and it has led to a lot of applications and has implications beyond corporate finance, including central banking, for example. Now, much of this research work built on this core framework that I just showed you and add additional elements to address specific research questions. And much of the research questions are quite thought provoking uh, because these two roles of the market price, which is reflecting the cash flow, but also affecting the cash flow, forces us to dig deeper into the meaning of market efficiency and also forces us to think carefully about market institutions such as market design or security regulation. And the paper um, in, in this conference has described this extended literature quite well. But much of the work is quite challenging. Um, to appreciate the challenge, I want to bring your attention to these uh, uh, two elements, and one of them Lian has already mentioned in, in his talk. And the first challenge is that the researchers must be very careful about modeling the price because it has this nagging circularity feature. So in estimating the future cash flow V right here, the equilibrium price P must take into account its own impact on the rational decision maker's decision K right here. And the real decision will affect this, uh, uh, the cash flow V, the same cash flow V that the price is trying to reflect. In other words, the cash flow is now endogenous of the price itself. So structurally or mathematically, P is a function of K, which is also a function of P. So a fixed point is, is, is needed, and that makes it challenging and nagging. Uh, challenge number two, the researchers now must be very careful about modeling higher order beliefs. And to look at, so let's look at the informed trader here, right here. The informed trader in deciding how much to trade to put into the order flow, the, the, the trader needs to take into account several things. One is, its own belief about these future shocks, which determines the cost, ca cash flows. This is the first order belief. But then he needs to worry about what the market makers believe about these shocks, which is second order, or, and then his belief about the decision makers belief about these shocks. So that's second order. And on top of that, there's a third order, which is the, the, the trader's belief about the market makers belief about the decision makers belief about these shocks, because all of these are relevant. 
So these are highly delicate modeling subtleties. These are very challenging. Um, now the paper is actually more challenging because it builds on top of this basic framework and focuses on choices made by the agent prior to uh, playing this feedback game. So the paper is ultimately about information choice or information or choices on information. And this is the theme of the conference and make me very happy. And to see this, let's go back to the framework, right? The paper lays this out um, for day one, but the focus is on the day, day, uh, day zero analysis, which is the, the paper investigate the choices of the traders deciding how much information to get before playing the feedback game. And then as well as the real decision makers choice of acquiring information. This opens up a host of opportunities and the two may uh, be acquiring two different information or as the paper shows, some overlap. In fact, this idea of overlap is the key construct that underlines many of these key results. Now, endogenous information is not new. So what's new here? What's new are the many layer of interactions that due to some key modeling ingredients. And these ingredients are two different sources of payoffs, uh, uncertainty, so theta M and theta F, and then two different types of information acquisition technologies, uh, which is different compared to advantage that Lian had mentioned, this is um, similar to inter international trade, or uh, compared to advantage international trade. And then we also have multiple informed traders, it's a continuum of them, and which may take different information choices. So as a result, the model allows endogenous information specialization among two dimensions. One is among different traders and also among, uh, between the traders as a whole and the decision maker. So these ingredients combined with the sources, uh, economic forces that I described in the feedback model earlier delivers the complementarity that is, that's, that's kind of the uh, novel result in Lian's talk where in panel two, where, um, where you have these two upper sloping uh, best responses. So of course, with this many layers, it's understandable that simplifying assumptions must be made to make the model tractable. And they include um, uncertainty structure, that's uh, 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 information structure, uh, binary uh, real choices, invest or not invest, uh, trading decisions between zero and one and, and uh, uh, between negative one and positive one and zero, um, and then some equilibrium restrictions. So as someone who worked in the area, um, I, I'm very sympathetic to these choices. Now, after paying this price of building a, a, a complex model and then simplifying assumptions, the, 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 the model delivers some nice results. I'm not gonna summarize them in detail because there's plenty, but I want to provide you with some of my own intuition and hope they are helpful for you and for the author to better understand the results. One strong force in the information acquisition game is that the firm wants to be different, right? They want to acquire information that's different from the market. And this is somewhat straightforward because the firm just wants to make the best decision, right? the investment decision. Um, so they just want the best information possible. In this case, it's simply best combined information because they are coming from two sources, own and from the market. This is almost the same as the standard information economics intuition in a simple, in a simple single person decision making ses setting like Blackwell theorem would tell us. The other, the strong force is that the trader's preference is somewhat strategic depending on uh, the MPV. So if cash flow is in, in, in exogenous, more information per se is better because it's just giving me more information advantage. But when the trader's own information may, through price, persuade the decision maker to make a decision, then as a trader, you, wanna, uh, t you want them to take the positive decision, a one-sided decision, because making the investment allows you to make uh, profit. And this is a twist. And to me, this is sort of similar to almost like a cheat top games where the informed party's preference is one-sided um, and then except now the preference um, is not, it's just endogenous through the trading game. So, and, and Lian didn't talk about this, but I really like the value of commitment extension in the model. That sounds to me like a Stackelberg leader advantage in IO. Um, it also reminds me many accounting papers that demonstrate that designing an information system may indeed serve as a commitment device. And so the paper may offer us a, a, another reason for why companies commit to certain information systems. Um, now, where do we go from here? And I meant this for both the current paper and the future work. Um, in my view, um, the current paper 
uh, can do a few things to convince the broader audience, uh, especially new to the area, by providing a more compelling empirical or institutional motivation. Um, the paper is well motivated theoretically, um, uh, and, but I think it does not yet to have a compelling uh, motivation from the empirical or institutional side. And that is, what is the empirical puzzle uh, that applied theory is now asked to explain here? Or, or what is the institutional um, uh, or policy problem uh, for this paper to kind of help us to, to illuminate, right? Now, for the theorists who are already on board motivationally, I mean, as a theorist, I want to know these answers to these questions. But for them, I think providing some benchmarks uh, may be helpful in isolating the effects here. And, and, and so uh, a, a single dimension uncertainty benchmark maybe, and, and then a non-feedback benchmark. Um, and I think, uh, I know uh, Tai and Lian had done some related work in this area. So this is quite easy uh, to, be, to, to do. Um, now I'm a bit partial, um, uh, but, but I like to see more development in the commitment model extension because institutionally, uh, I, I think firm, this is the one shot model, right? But, but firm is the long run player here, right? The firm will be here uh, uh, throughout and, and traders come in and out. So, uh, so uh, as a firm is indeed in a position to commit at least part of the information acquisition technology. Um, now, in terms of future work that can build on this paper's insight and lessons, uh, at least along few dimensions, I'm, I'm an accountant. Um, so I'm, I'm worried about uh, information generation as well as uh, information dissemination like public disclosure. Uh, I, I think Itai and, and Lian had also done, uh, uh, done this in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the previous work. Um, so just to go to show you, go back to the framework, what public disclosure does is to add even big picture, make this picture even more messy because now the firm can disclose and, and put it in the public in domain some information that will affect uh, informed traders as well as uh, 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 stock uh, 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 market makers. Um, now, similarly, manipulation is quite prevalent here, um, especially how, how firm can play uh, the different crowds within the trader off each other. Uh, I think that could be quite interesting. Um, and back to commitment, I think it will be interesting to see what firm can do uh, to manage different aspects of information generation, uh, like legal disclosure requirement versus discretionary information acts. Um, now, there's some, uh, before closing, I want to I have some minor comments that may help the paper immediately. Uh, I think in my mind, the term coordination, which is used in the paper, is typically associated with games where players need to pick an equilibrium from, uh, from several, uh, which, may, which leads to beliefs and outcome pairs that's self-fulfilling. Um, and, and I don't think that's what's going on here. So I think the paper uh, may want to clarify to the readers like me uh, that multiple equilibria is not really the main concern here. Uh, multiple, that's, that means that's multiple equilibria for, for a given set of parameters. Um, and also I, I've suggested some papers for, for my accounting colleagues that may be relevant. And I just realized one of them, uh, Joanna Wu's paper, you've, you've already mentioned in your, in your slides. And the other is actually a, a theory paper that's quite nice related to two dimension of information in accounting. Um, so let me end with what I think that's about cool about this paper. Uh, it's at the frontier of applied theory um, and it's challenging work, very challenging work, and it should lead to additional work uh, that incorporate institutional features. Um, so thanks for your attention. Uh, it has been a real blast. Thanks.